right, and welcome back. This is Raul. I am going to be going into a little bit of frequency and pulse width modulation demo. Uh, this is the second audio demo in this series about the A110. And this time around, we're going to be demonstrating uh, frequency modulation and pulse width modulation. That's going to be occurring here in the CV1. One, two. This is going to be where the frequency modulation happens, and then the pulse width modulation is going to occur here at CV1 and CV2 of the pulse width. And so we'll be looking at that here in a little bit. But before we go into that, we're going to talk about what's going to be doing the modulating. So something's going to be feeding into the standard VCO, and that's going to be our little friend over here, the Dofer A145 LFO. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, there may be some of you out there. Uh, term LFO, in case uh, you're not clear, is a low frequency oscillator. Now, what does that mean? Uh, well, that means that it happens and it has a frequency, but it's not in an audible range that we human beings can hear. So let's try and just see what happens if we try to hear it. So I'm going to plug in triangle low frequency oscillator into input one. And just as I expected, we hear little or nothing. Although on the inputs on my recorder, I can actually see a little bit of rumble. So if I turn this volume up a little bit, bring up the gain, still not hearing anything. Bring up the gain here, still not hearing anything. I'm going to bring the frequency up there. We hear a little bit of clicking going on. Now that clicking is actually the frequency of the oscillator. So as I turn it down, it goes a little bit slower. It's very, very hard to hear, but hopefully you can hear it a little bit. OK. There it is. So I'm going to unpatch that because now we got the idea of what a low frequency oscillator is and that it operates where we can't hear it, but it is moving. So that movement is what we're going to be counting on to help us adjust CV1, CV2, and even pulse width CVs over here. Uh, now you may notice that some of the symbols over here on the LFO as well are going to be very similar looking. Uh, you may have noticed them over here on the VCO. We have a saw, square, triangle, sine. And then over here, in a little bit different order, we have a square, triangle, sine, saw. And this one's a little different. This one's an inverted saw. So there you go. Uh, as long as you had a little demo of these, you kind of get an idea of what we're talking about when we're talking about these waveforms. Okay, so that's the basic idea behind the LFO. Uh, there's two other uh, settings that this LFO can be placed into. Uh, the main use is as a low frequency oscillator, LFO, and that's in the low position on the right. Uh, there's also a middle position, which is the high position, and then there's the mid position, which is over on the left. So you're probably wondering, what is that? Well, in the high range, it's actually meant to be uh, an audible oscillator. And then in the mid-range, it's semi-audible. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate that so that we can hear what that sounds like, because we may actually use some of these signals in a little bit when we modulate the CV1 and CV2 inputs. So I'm going to go to mid-mode, and I'm going to take my triangle wave again, and I'm going to patch it into my mixer. And let's hear what we hear. But before I do that, so I don't blow my ears off, I'm going to bring the volume down to about two on both of my outputs on my mixer. And so here we go. We don't hear a lot. And see there, it's coming into the audible range. So if I bring this down, it goes back into that non-audible range where we could barely hear it in the low area, unless we turned up, of course, a lot of gain. We were able to hear it. So I'm going to go all the way back up. So there it's audible, all the way at the top. 
And I'm just going to pipe through the other waveforms real quick, just so you can hear that it in fact is audible in the mid-range. Okay, so that was a sine wave. Here's a saw. Okay, inverted saw. We haven't heard that one yet, so let's hear it. So there we have an inverted saw. And then here's the square wave, so let's plug it in there. Square wave. So the sounds are very similar to what we had in the VCO. So just be aware of that, something good to know as we move along. Uh, there is one port here that I haven't talked about, uh, the reset in. For the purposes of this demo, just to keep it focused on the A110, we're not going to actually go into the reset in. So that takes care of the mid uh, setting for the LFO. Let's go into the high setting. And let's go just kind of pipe through the waveforms. This time we'll start, we'll start at the bottom. Start with the pulse wave, square wave, I should say. There it is. I can adjust the frequency. Okay. And then we're going to go a triangle wave. And we're going to adjust the frequency. And then we're going to go into the sine wave. Adjust the frequency. There we go. And we're going to go into saw wave. We're going to do a little bit of adjusting. the way at the top. So it goes to very, very high pitch. Okay, then we're going to go to inverted saw. We're about 12 o'clock. Let's go down to the bottom. And now let's go up to the top. Okay. So those are the waveforms that are found here in Dofer A145 LFO. And again, this is going to be what we're going to use to modulate our standard VCO. So I'm flipping back into the low position, and I'm going to put my frequency at about 12 o'clock. And we're going to start our little demonstration of frequency modulation here at CV1 and CV2. So I'm going to patch my wave in, and I'm going to start with a triangle wave, and I'm going to go into my mixer just so we can hear that what it sounds like normally in case you missed the first demo. Okay, so that's our triangle wave, and I'm going to turn it up a little bit so we get a decent signal. Okay, so there we go. There's a triangle wave. Now we're going to do a little bit of modulating. So we're going to take our LFO signal, and we're going to patch it into CV1. And yeah, let's start with the inverted saw. So I'm going to patch in the inverted saw, and then I'm going to patch into CV1. And we should immediately start to hear some modulation as soon as I press it. There we go. So we have a little bit of movement. This oscillator is moving the pitch of the standard VCO according to its waveform, inverted saw in this case. And let's uh, turn the frequency up just a little bit so we hear what a higher frequency will do to it. Okay. We heard it at the middle f setting, so let's hear it at the low setting. I'm not going to go too low because the low frequency oscillator on this LFO can... Uh, can sometimes take quite a while. Okay, so I think you got the idea. I'm gonna unpatch the inverted saw. Let's take a listen to regular saw. See what that sounds like. This time we're gonna start at the bottom, or close to the bottom. Like I said, I don't wanna take it all the way to the bottom because then we'll be listening forever for it to ramp up. almost 
like a, a bomb dropping. So that's in the low position. Let's hear it in the mid position. Sounds almost like a drum of some sort, electronic. Let's go up in the higher position. There we go. Definitely sounding like a kick drum of some sort. Now let's take it all the way to the top. There we go. Okay, moving on to the next wave. We're going to stay at the top and go right into our sine wave. So this is our sine wave modulating at CV1 to the standard VCO A110. That's at the high position. Let's go about to the mid. There's our mid position. Let's go down to slightly low position. Doing pretty great. Gonna unpatch the sine wave. Let's go on to our triangle wave. Uh, we're gonna stay in the low position. Just kind of doing back and forth, back and forth. I'm gonna patch into the triangle wave and we're gonna modulate our CV1. So that's what the low position sounds like on the triangle wave, modulating. The A110. Now let's bring it up to the mid position. Now let's bring it all the way up to the top. Okay, so that's a triangle wave. And leave it in the high position over here or the full frequency position, and we're going to patch a square wave into here. We get almost sort of a Morse code type sound. And if I bring it down, let's see what happens. Okay, so uh, you may be wondering what's going on here. Uh, there was a lot of movement with all these other waves. What's going on with this, uh, this square wave? Why is it so static, one note? Um, well, remember, uh, if you do in the first demo that we had of this, we were talking about a square wave and how it's like a square, sort of, uh, in that, you know, square has four sides if you go, you know, this way, square. So at the top, it's just a straight line, and at the bottom, it's a straight line. So what's happening here is it's on at one constant CV, and then it's off at one constant CV. So it's just top of the square, bottom of the square, top of the square, bottom of the square. So there's no movement up to the top and movement down to the bottom. It's all or nothing for the most part, on and off. So if we go down a little bit, we'll hear that, and it'll just continue doing the same thing, except it's lasting a little bit longer. Okay, so there we go. Modulation into CV1 of the frequency.